During World War II, the Germans widely recruited soldiers from among the nations of Europe. Thousands of French, Dutch, Belgians, Russians, Norwegians and Danes served in regular army and Waffen-SS units, some because they were pre-war fascists, some because they hated communism, and some to escape bad conditions in prison camps. But it is not widely known that the Germans managed to recruit British and Commonwealth prisoners into a very unlikely SS unit. It was the smallest and least successful of Germany's foreign legions, a testament to the loyalty of the vast majority of Britons captured by the Axis. Just 54 men actually served in SS uniform. They were a collection of pre-war fascists, criminals or social misfits who were looking for an easy life. Some were motivated by a pathological hatred of communism. The idea for what would become the British SS unit was the brainchild of upper-class socialite and fascist John Amory, who had deserted to the German cause and produced propaganda for his new masters. He was quite a catch for the Germans, for his father was none other than the Secretary of State for India, a member of Winston Churchill's cabinet. A virulent anti-communist, Amory knew that among the tens of thousands of British prisoners of war in German camps were some who had been members of Sir Oswald Mosley's British Union of Fascists, the notorious Black Shirts. Amory persuaded the Germans that he could recruit such men, and they set up a special holiday camp at Genshagen near Berlin, where anti-Bolshevik propaganda and pro-German material was circulated to British POWs. Few took the bait. After many months of recruiting, only about a platoon's worth of men had come forward. In the meantime, the project was turned over to the SS, who founded a new unit, the British Free Corps, on the 1st of January 1944, and put the men through basic training. They received regular Waffen-SS uniforms, with unique insignia. On the collar patch were three lions passant, an English symbol. On the left sleeve, a Union Jack patch, and below, a cuff title that read British Free Corps in English. The BFC spent a lot of time enjoying themselves in bars and consorting with prostitutes, showing off their uniforms, etc. But eventually, in late 1944, they were ordered to proceed to the Eastern Front and combat with the Red Army. The 11th of October 1944, the British Free Corps, a couple of dozen strong, reported to the Waffen-SS Pioneer School at Dresden for training in demolition and anti-tank warfare. Always led by a regular English-speaking German officer, some of the Britons had been promoted to junior NCOs. Interestingly, the BFC was allowed to retain British-style drill and saluting. Equipped with a couple of half-tracks and MP44 assault rifles, the BFC was part of the 11th Panzer Reconnaissance Battalion of the 11th SS Volunteer Panzergrenadier Division Nordland, in the line at Grusov. In line with the international nature of the entire division, their company commander was Swedish. The small BFC contingent occupied positions in the small village of Schönburg on the Oder River. On the 22nd of March 1945, the BFC was digging in when their company was struck by a Soviet attack with artillery and mortars, and partially overrun. However, in the fighting that followed, the small BFC unit acquitted itself well. But many of the members, deciding that combat against the Soviets was not quite the adventure it had once sounded like, made representations to their commander to be pulled off the line. They were instead re-rolled into truck drivers at corps headquarters under Obergruppenführer Felix Steiner, and retreated steadily with the 3rd Panzer Corps, headquarters troops, in mid-April, as the Soviets broke through to Berlin. On the 29th of April 1945, Steiner, realising the futility of the struggle, decided to break contact with the Soviets and march his men to British and US lines to surrender. The BFC broke up, many discarding their SS uniforms for British battle dress which they had retained, some pretending to be liberated prisoners of war. Most were steadily identified and arrested by army intelligence and thoroughly questioned by MI5, the security service. Many faced prosecution for treason. John Amory, who never joined the BFC, was captured in northern Italy dressed in Italian fascist uniform and hanged after a trial in England. 
Many of the others receive prison terms, while a few escape prosecution altogether. Here are the fates of a selection of BFC men. They could expect little sympathy or leniency from the courts. In the final analysis, of the tens of thousands of Britons captured by the Germans, only 54 actually donned German uniform. Their contribution to the Axis cause was negligible and was a propaganda embarrassment for the Germans. Most of the former BFC men were released early from their sentences and spent the rest of their lives concealing their membership of the British SS unit. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share and also support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.